Leaning in the Hi. Hi. Thank you for taking the time out. Thank you for taking the time out to join us and talk with us today. It's a pleasure to have you with us. How's your day going? Uh, I'm just now leaving my show, so. Oh, so how was your show today? Yes, I'm just now leaving my radio show next from Reality Radio, but I am all here with you guys, and I know it looks a little dark because I'm in a car, and I'm headed back to my next location, so what's going on, ladies? <laughs> you is what's going on right now, girl. <laughs> Yes, we thank you for joining us, though. We really do thank you for taking the time out of your day to join with me a minute. Podcasting. Yeah, because I, I literally... I literally left work in the car and I am I'm hopping on y'all show. I, it's a little dark, but we in here like swimwear. Yes, we are. <laughs> we can see you. You good. You look good, too. Thank you. So tell us about what you have going on. Tell us about yourself. What? All those who might not know, um, everything <laughs> that you have going on, you have the radio station, you have books. Well, for the ones that's living up under a rock. Right. Uh, of course, Nephi, yes I am. Nephi from Keisha Call The Way It Is, um, Frankie and Nephi Show, um, Iyala Van Zandt twice. I, I was able to get through that twice. And I do have my own show, Nick from Reality Radio. And I have a new project coming out. <laughs> Suffering in silence. I'm so excited. Yes. <laughs> so that's your new book. Suffering in silence is your new book. Yes. So and for those of you that don't know. Yeah, for those of you, for those of them that don't know, I am a three-time author. This will be my fourth book, and this time I'm bringing the people in with me. So, okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. So I know you extra excited. We extra excited to get the book soon as it released. Yeah, I'm excited. I am excited. Um, um, I did this a different way. Um, because, you know, I went through a, a time in my life where I did not want to talk about my suffering. I went through a bit of divorce. Um, I was, you know, dealing with a custody battle. You know, I was, I, I lost a lot, you know, but then guess what God did? Showed up and showed right. out. Sure did. Showed up and showed out, okay? Yes, yeah, he said, I'm going to use you and your voice and your power and your authority and your platform that I put you in to help these people out here. So that's mm -hmm. what Suffering in Silence is about. Okay. Okay. So the whole time you were basically trying to mask what you was going through so you didn't let it out. So in right. this book, you're basically right. letting it all out. Yeah, so basically, um, no one has ever um, known about anything in my marriage, because that's just not the type of person I am. Um, everybody thinks that when I talk, it's, it's all about, you know, Keisha, Frankie, or my students. Right. No, I have my own personal life that I deal with. You know, I have five yeah. children. Two grandkids, like oh yeah, oh, wow. so you have all your own stuff going on. You yeah. know, and I have accomplishments. You know, my daughter graduated from Georgia State University oh, with okay. presidential yes. honors. Yes, with and us. with her child, my grandson that is three, and you know she's getting ready to have uh, my granddaughter December the twelfth. Oh, and wow. you know, I have a daughter. My eighteen-year-old daughter is about to graduate from high school. She go and get her own coins. I mean, listen, all of, listen. People, people can paint whatever picture they want to paint for you. Right, that's true. 
But only you, mm -hmm. only you know the real, the real story. Yeah. That. So right. I'm not going to allow nobody to paint no picture for me. That's right. right. So, you know, this project is so important to me because I want people to understand that it's okay to live in your truth. It's okay to use your voice. It's okay to say, I need help. It's okay to say, I can't do this today. Right. It's okay to say, man, I've been right. suffering and I'm tired. Mm -hmm. You know, but we don't know how to do that. Right, and that's true. And I, I was, I, I was one of those people that suffered in silence and did not want to share nor talk about the fact that I was damaged, depressed, uh, uh, um, emotionally distraught, um, just on the verge of losing it. And had it not been for a, 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 a few, few circle of people that God put in my life, we wouldn't be having this conversation today because right. I'd probably be in some type of a cellular sign or something. But that God, that God said, not so, my child. That's I'm right. going to use you for the people. That's right. <laughs> That's right. And I'm glad he did. Right, so on those days when you um, what makes you push and keep going on those days when you just don't feel like going and going? What makes you keep pushing? So what motor is in your back or what knee is in your back that makes you say, hey, get on up and keep going. Do this, do that on those days that's not so great. I don't have a choice. Right. I was appointed. Mm -hmm. I was appointed and I have to walk in that authority. I have children and grandchildren. I don't have a choice to say, no, I can't do this. Right. You have, you have them that's dependent on you. Right. So when you first wrote your first book, Price I Paid, was that your first book that you wrote? No, my first book is My Happiness is My Sanity. Okay. But when you wrote price that um you paid, exactly what were you going through at that moment that made that inspired you to hey, let me keep writing another book and another book. Now you're on your fourth book. The price I paid was simply um me expressing that I'm not gonna I I, I pay the price for somebody else. Mm-hmm. That's it, and that's all. I paid a price for somebody else. And it was not appreciated. Okay. So, Nephi, when... Yeah, I'm going to leave that right there. When you went, <laughs> when you went on Ayana Fix My Life, how, how was that experience? Do you feel like it did help you? Do you feel like it... Like the whole thing uh, stuff, like it helped I'm you... Like, it helped me continue with all my divorce. Yeah, it helped me. Oh, so it didn't help you stay or want to consider staying, making it work. No. Iyala uh, Fixed My Life gave me um, complete closure, and it helped me understand me and what I need to fix for me. If, I, I, if, I, if, if I'm a gutter snipe, that's what I was at that time, and that's what it was, you know. Um, if I had to understand who I am and and know that this was no longer a part of my journey, right. that's what it is. Right. So pretty, she pretty much helped you deal with self and learn self. And yeah, she you know pretty that, much. Hey, it's not working out. It's okay to let go if it's not working out. You need exactly. To she self. She, she allowed me to understand mm -hmm. that it's okay. Right. But self-hate is not okay. Right. Right, and that's true. Letting somebody else uh, make you feel like self-hate is okay and, 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 and this is the closest person to you, it's not okay. 
how somebody gonna tell you that they love you, but they really don't even love themselves? So how can they love you when they don't love themselves? And, and that's true. Because you have to love yourself first. You do have to love yourself first. Right. So do you feel like that was on your part or his? Was like loving yourself first? Do you feel like he was loving yourself before you even like continued on with your marriage? Or did it make you realize that you didn't love yourself enough to walk away? I didn't love myself enough to walk away. But I, uh, I walked away. <laughs> A queen, a queen, a queen is in the building. Right. <laughs> How about that? I've been divorced going on seven years. Oh wow. Living on live living by myself with just me and my children. Two years. I lost a lot, but I gained my soul back. I gained That's me good. back. Yes. Yes. <laughs> that's all that really matters. Don't get it twisted, baby. <laughs> okay. Yeah, and that's all that really matters that you know that you gain you yourself. yourself. Right. You oh, yeah. Let me home. tell you. I gained man, I gained me me back so much. I I thought I was gonna be a dang on born again virgin. I was like, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what? What? Oh, <laughs> yeah, I I start and I started to invest in some stuff that I wouldn't even invest in. But <laughs> the greatest part about my independence was understanding that I can be exactly who I am with nobody putting any other kind of authority over me. Right. So do you feel as though, like, since you've been single now and divorced, that your career is going in the right direction now that you're focusing on self? So now your career is now, you're focused on self. It gave you time to learn self, think of a career, plan it out, and go for it. Let me tell you so something. You feel your confidence. Let me tell you, this is, I'm 40, I'll be 41. The greatest part of my journey wow. is learning wow. me. <laughs> wow, that's great. That's, yeah. that's, that's awesome. <laughs> the yes. greatest part of my journey is learning Nefertiria Roche. You. Oh, Not Nessie, because everybody know Nessie. Yes. I know Nessie, but I had to learn Nefertiria. And I'm excited about her. Yes. You found out that Nefertiria is awesome, too. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so what's, what's next for Nefertiria? Say it again. What's next for Nefertiria? What, what, what's next? What's next? Um, I'm probably most likely a lot of traveling. Um, I don't know if I'm going to be on the dating scene like that. Mostly. So you're not uh, dating? Kill so you're not dating? No. Hmm? What? Uh huh? Hey? What? Something wrong with you, Aggie? Yes. Yeah, so, she didn't. She didn't over her mouth. Yeah, no. Over her mouth at all. Yeah, nah. No. Nah. Not not at the moment. No. Oh, okay. Well, that's good. Right now you're dating yourself and your career. And it's good. Yes. I'm doing I'm doing me. That's, and that's good. That's good. And I'm loving right. on me. And I'm congratulating me. Mm -hmm. And I'm being engulfed with me and my children and my grandchildren. And you know, sometimes being involved with yourself, mm -hmm. that's the best relationship you can have. It's more rewarding. It's, yeah. it's the most rewarding thing. Yeah. No, and I, and I, and I, I'm... I'm I'm amazed at what God has done in my life, and um, and it's time for the suffering and silence to be over. I cannot wait for you guys to see the new project. And um, listen, I'm loving on myself so much. So I'm ready to see. It. Yeah, we are. Do you? <laughs> what, what do you want? 
<laughs> so, so Nemeter, as far as like other celebrities, do you feel like you fit right in with them? You said as far as say it again, as far as other what? Like celebrities, do you feel like you fit in with other celebrities? Do I feel like I I fit in with other celebrities? Yes. It's not for me to do that. That's oh, not my. Okay. No. It's I not mean, it's meaning that's not. It's not for me to fit in that way. It's for me to mm -hmm. stand out. Stand out. Right. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good so how is your relationship with your mom and your sister, with the rest of the family? I love them. We love each other. Like, okay. you know, um, I would say it could be better, but we love each other. We talk and we do what families do. Right. And and that's true. You know, most families do. You know, you, you fuss, you come back, you separate, you fuss. But right now, I guess with you working on yourself, yeah, we we roll like family. We roll like family. Sometimes you need a break, you gotta come back. You know, but we roll like family, and everybody is doing great, amazing, and we are all proud of each other, and we are moving forward as a family. But you know, it's okay to take a break sometimes. There's nothing wrong with taking a break sometimes. Yeah. Nothing at all. So what do you do like for fun? Woo, for fun in real life. Yeah, like real life fun. <laughs> like what do you do? You know, get on the plane. <laughs> okay, boy, where you going? Like when you go, like, me. Let me tell you something. Me and my right hand man, my I got a what? Well, I got a five. No, because five is a seven man team but I got a one man team we get on the plane and we go and we travel and do we go to work and come home and then I go and do children grandchildren and like for in, in my per like personal hobby mm -hmm. okay personal hobby is it involves my children okay. like to see what they want to do with their lives and watch them, you know, grow and watch and see what they want to do in their lives. And, um, shoot, go walking. I'll be, I'll be walking. I like to walk. You say oh, you like exercise. You do like exercise a lot. Yeah, I walk. I walk up and down stairs and I walk. I walk. Mm -hmm. So do you enjoy um, your grandkids? Do you enjoy being a grandmother? What? <laughs> <laughs> it's like being a grandmother in a whole different How path. How dare you say that? What? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I be calling my daughter like, uh, I ain't, where my grandson at? I don't want right. to talk to my grandson. <laughs> you know, it's like a whole different vibe when you have grandkids. The yeah, it's, give you a whole different vibe. Yes, it's so different to be a grandmother. Mm -hmm. And you know the crazy part is somebody was like, you're so young to be a grandmother. And I'm like, how? How are you going to choose when it's time for me to be a grandmother? Right. Right. Exactly right. No, you can't choose that. <laughs> so I, my grandson is my world. Like, I... I'd be like, why he at school? Why you didn't bring him over? When you <laughs> bring him over? <laughs> yeah. And then my granddaughter, um, granddaughter will be here. Well, she's due to be born on the 12th. I can't ex disclose her name and all of that stuff because right. I can't. So, right. you know, being a grandmother has really changed my mindset. So not only do I have five children, I got two grandchildren. Mm hmm So you have to add them too when you talk about your kids. Not to mention, I'm forty and five, but I will be forty one December the fourth. Yeah. Hey, so what you doing for your birthday? December the fourth. Right. What are what you are gonna you? do for your birthday? Uh work. 
probably because I ain't planning nothing. I mean, it's COVID out here, like right. So how? Uh, so as far as like the like your has it on the radio station, like how do you like that? I love it. Um, I love using my voice. I didn't know. I really didn't have no confidence when it came to radio. Mm -hmm. But when you got a good support system and it's a good support team, and first and foremost, you got God on your side, you know, I waste and I've been with his 92.3 ATL for two and a half years, living in reality radio, and I absolutely love it. Well, so, what led you to go down the road of being a radio, you know, doing a radio station? Or being a host on the radio station, what led you down that road? Um, I decided that there was another door that I could mm -hmm. walk through outside of television to, to, to you know, support my fans and also use my voice and be an advocate out here. So even though I didn't think that I could do radio, mm -hmm. it absolutely put me in a great position, but it absolutely put me in a different lane. Right. And I, I tackled the task, and it worked, it worked for me. Right, because radio is totally different from what you're used to, right? Because you've done TV, a lot of TV where everyone sees you. So now that you're just using your voice, it's like a whole different thing for you, right? Yes. Well, not necessarily a whole different thing. Mm -hmm. I'm just using my voice in a whole different way. Okay. Meaning, I'm still that um, personality. I'm still that, mm -hmm. that public figure. I'm still that advocate. Right. I just use it in a different way versus right. being on television. And then right. if you really think about it, um, who is out here doing any production right now in the midst of a pandemic? So it exactly. absolutely worked out in the greatest way. <laughs> right, right. So what is your ultimate goal at this point? What, what are your, your my ultimate goals? My ultimate goal is for, um, for God to use for me. Mm -hmm. And I want the people to understand that you too can be the greatest you. You too can, you know, just because a person calls you ghetto or hood or ugly or uh, whatever these people be out here saying, that does not mean that you can't win. That does not mean that you can't become an entrepreneur. That does not mean that you can't get on your two feet and walk the path mm -hmm. to walk. That does not right. mean that you cannot. And if people don't understand that, you, uh, uh, I uh, can't is not, I can is not even in the damn dictionary. Like, bro, we can, you, we can you all. Right about that. Huh. You, you right about that. We can all do this. So my ultimate goal is to show that we can do it and get right. it done because I'm doing it and I'm getting it done and so can you to the viewers right. and the listeners. Hmm. Period. <laughs> so now you have a you seem real like down to earth like you can fit in around anyone. You said what? You, I said you're very down to earth. You seem like you can fit in around just about anybody. I do fit out around anybody until they step on that pinky toe. <laughs> <laughs> so what's your pet peeve? I, I, you I, can, go, I can walk like in the room with anybody. Like, what's your pet peeve <laughs> for you when you're around someone and they do something like when they step on your pinky toe? What is it that? What's your biggest pet peeve? My biggest pet peeve is not being a human being. Don't act like you ain't never struggled. Right. <laughs> that part. That part. So, it, and and it's a lot of them hypocrites. Act like they ain't never struggled ever. Mm -hmm. Don't act like you ain't never been through the trenches. Mm -hmm. Don't act like you ain't never been hungry. 
and, and you had to go out there and grind and hustle, don't act like you don't understand what it really is because you do. But don't, when you get to where God puts you or where he takes you, don't make pretend like you don't know where the, you come from. Don't right. do that. Especially right. when you in the face of your own people. Don't do that to us. Exactly. Remember your struggle and then remember remember your, strong, your struggle, honor your triumph, but allow the people to know how you made it out. Don't just show them what God did in your life or what you did and how you got all of that. Show them your struggle, but also show them that you're trying because they'll understand more. So right. I don't know how to I don't know how to be around non-human beings. Right. So if you want to alienate yourself from that, then you do that. I ain't gonna be able to do it. Right. I know that's right. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you think what do you think about our new vice president let me tell you something we won we did but we, got, we won but we got so much more work to do we do we got so much more healing to do mm -hmm. we got so much more to do outside of changing what has happened in the White House. That's just the beginning. We need to make sure that our ending is good. Beautiful. Yes. We want our beautiful ending. Yes. Yes. So I am absolutely elated and proud um, that we have um, an African American woman. Right. In the presidency chair. Yes. yes. But we also have to understand mm -hmm. the work that needs to be done. And it's a lot of work that needs to be done. Yes. Now it's just a matter of if they will be able to actually do it. Get it approved, get it done, complete the job. Yes, you, we, 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 we have to. They're going to do what they say they're going to do? What you say? You said, I, we, what I'm saying is, we are going to have to, we're going to have to help them do the work. Right. We're going to have to stop tearing down our own. We're going to have to stop yeah. killing our own. We're going to have yeah. to stop uh, 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 allowing them to do what we do to ourselves. But it's going to have to start with us. Right. And what you think, how do you think that we can go about doing that or getting that done when we start all working together and coming together as a people versus, you know, killing each other or turning each other down. I don't have an answer for that because people got hatred in their heart. Yeah. People are, um, they're sad out here. Their mental, their mental stability is not there. Like, I can't answer that question because I don't know. Right. I don't have an answer for that, but I know you're not understanding the body of all that we come together and really support each other and, and really be about each other and be about us, then I think we will win more, but I can't answer that question. That is a question for the universe. Yeah, yeah, and I'm only yeah. one person in the, I'm only one person in right. Right. <laughs> so do you ever think you'll do TV anymore like do you miss it I'll be back okay I will really expect that I will, I will, I'll be back oh, okay <laughs> okay and I'll yeah I'll be back I'll be back sooner than later. I'll be back. Oh, okay. Like, how soon? Can you tell us, like, how soon? <laughs> you, 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 you must got something in the making. You got something in the making, huh? You said what? I said you had something in the making, huh, that you're going to pop out with. Uh, well, maybe. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> now, would this show be a show with just you? Or would there be others? Maybe. Oh, 
We can't get nothing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> maybe. Maybe everything. So, is maybe. We're gonna leave it at maybe then. Okay. So what we ask all of our guests that comes on, we always ask, what advice would you give Wait Again Minute podcast? Say it again. What advice would you give us here at Wait Again Minute Podcast? What advice would you give us? For, um, first of all, Wait Again Minute, I was like, <laughs> so is that Wait Again Minute? I was like, that means, hold up, let's get this together. Yeah, let's get this right. <laughs> Let's set the tone. That's right. Yes. So I would say um, to your listeners and your viewers um, to wait again a minute. Meaning, hold up, think about it, process it, and allow yourself to understand the road that you are traveling. And please, please, please don't discredit your process. Your process is going to uh, uh, um, help your purpose and it's going to help, help your prosper. Uh -huh. That's what I would say to your way to gain a minute because you got to wait a gain a minute, minute. And don't be mad about your purpose. Don't, don't, don't be mad about your process right. because your process will equal your prosper. Mm hmm. Oh, I like that. You gotta, gotta go through the process. process. I like you that. Gotta go the, you gotta go through. You gotta go through the process. I'm gonna have to use that. Yeah, I like that. That's the caption right there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> so, all right, Abby. Well, it was so short, and we enjoyed talking to you tonight. And thank you for thank joining you. us. Thank you. Thank you. You could have been anywhere else, but you was right here with us on Wait a Damn Minute. Hey, wait a damn minute.